Hey guys, what's up? I found this super narnar, maybe Todd Swan, at the Michigan Pen Show. It's around here somewhere. Need some hair here. here. Ah. Here it is. It's a little gross and stuff. Nib's not there. Anyway, I figured I'd show you how to clean one of these up. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> the first thing uh, you should probably know is I got this information from Brian Anderson's blog. He had a blog post called Zen and the Art of Pen Polishing. And in it he uses Micromesh, which is available from Anderson Pens. And there are many different grits. Um, I would read the article. He goes over all of this. But I've never seen anyone actually make a video on how to actually do this. And so that's what we're going to do today. So... What I like to do is kind of disassemble the pen first because we're going to be using a lot of water. And I don't like getting water on the inside of the pen once it's assembled because you'll be going over this. You're going to get water on the inside probably. That's going to go down in the little lever hole there. So I like to take it apart. Um, that way later I can go in there with a paper towel or a giant, I use these giant Q-tip things that can go down in there and get the water out. Um, for now, I'll leave this assembled so it's easier to grab. But uh, water's going to get all over that sack and I'd rather not reassemble, you know, I'd rather not have the pen assembled and get the water all in there and, and not be able to get it out. I want to be able to clean that water out so it doesn't rust anything on the inside of that pen. First thing you should know is Micromesh is sandpaper. It's a very fine grit sandpaper, um, but it's sandpaper nonetheless. So if you've got imprints on your pen, which this one does, has the Swan logo and information here, and it has the model number stamped in the back here, you don't want to sand those off. So make a mental note or put a little piece of tape on it I haven't had good luck with tape because we get this so wet that the tape, as you're handling this, it just it flies off, it winds up in your lap. It, it doesn't stick. So I just kind of like to make a mental note as you're rotating the pen, you'll be able to kind of feel where it is and where relationship to where you're sanding. I just like to avoid it. Um, and after we're done, we'll, we'll show you a before and after of maybe next to the cap on how this turned out, but uh, let's get started. First thing I like to do is start with the, if the pen's a little rough, I, I like to start with the with the coarsest, the coarsest uh, micro mesh, because it'll get out, if you have any like big dings or bigger scratches or anything like that, if the pen doesn't have any big dings or big scratches, you don't have to start with 1500, you can start like in the middle somewhere. 3,600, 4,000. Um, but we'll we'll start at the beginning, and I'll, I'll show you each how each one looks. As you're doing this, the second you do this, you're going to look at this. You're going to go, I just ruined this pen. This pen, it's ruined. What, what have I done to this pen? But that's perfectly normal. The first ones are really rough. As we get up to, I'd say un, until you get up to 8,000, on this chart here, until you get up to 8,000, the pen's gonna look like garbage. It's gonna look like you ruined it. But you, you're not ruining it. You're just slowly taking off a little bit of material with each of these grits. And uh, in the end, it turns out really shiny. So let's get started. I like to keep it wet, like really wet, like really, really wet. So what I'll do maybe is just 
put a piece of paper towel down and get that thing all wet. Um, and then as we're as we're sanding this, and Brian goes over this in his blog article, as you're sanding this, you're going to see a little tiny bit of material accumulate on on the paper towel here as we go over it. And usually the way I like to do it, there's no set way to do it. You do whatever way you want. But the way I like to do it is I use each of these rougher grits twice. I go over it twice. Uh, I'll rotate, you know, I'll go 360 degrees, then another 360 degrees. I'll do it twice. I'll go around twice until I get up to say like 8,000. And then at 8,000, I will maybe do 10 passes. And then at 12,000, you do as many passes as you want, depending on how shiny you want it. This is basically just shining it out by the time you get up to 12,000. So if you want your pen a little shiny, do it a few times. If you want it really shiny, spend all night doing it. Um, so let's get started here. I'm going to start just past the imprint. I'm going to rotate the imprint out of the way. I'm going to start. I'm going to put my finger near the threads. I always put my finger wherever I don't want to sand. So there's the model number. There's the swan. We'll get that out of the way. Well, I'll put my fingers. I don't want to sand down the threads, so I'm going to put my finger over here. Now this is all clear, and then we're going to watch areas around both the lever and then just past the levers where the imprint is so I'm gonna start right there I'm gonna put my finger here so I don't sand past there onto the threads and just fairly gently we're not we're not using our he-man powers we're just gonna very gently go up and down the pen keeping it very very wet We're basically just wet sanding this, which is, it's literally what we're doing is we're wet sanding this. We just want to take out all the big bumps, big dings, big imperfections with the, with the higher grits here. And I might do like a montage or a sped up thing or, or something like that, because this literally, this will literally take hours. At least that's the way I do it. I usually put on some music, um, kind of a heathen, so I kind of like listening to trap music or trap remixes or EDM or just something fun and energetic to listen to. Because this is boring, let's be honest. This is really boring. But in the end, you're gonna have a super shiny pen, which is not boring. So we're just being careful here. We want to make sure we stay away from that lever because if you hit this with the the lever with this micro mesh it will you're going to take all the the plating off of it so you want to be very careful around that lever and then our imprint is rolling back around so i just want to be very careful get right in there stay away from that there's the imprint there's the model number just stay away I'm going to go right in between the model number and the imprint. We're just doing it nice and slow. Remember, we got music going in the background. There's the bottom of the imprint. I'm past that. We're going to come back up. Nice and gentle. And generally, after two passes with this 1500 grit, you're, you've got most of the... The, uh, the blemishes and imperfections and dings and whatnot out. And like I said, you'll wind up seeing material as you go along. Now, I haven't done this nearly enough to get material, but obviously there was some ink either on my fingers or on the pen or in somewhere in the pen. I'm getting some ink. This isn't from the from the pen itself, but you'll you'll start to see if your pen is clean or if your fingers are clean, which is, let's be honest, that's usually not the case. Um, you'll, you'll start to see material on here, and then you know you've gone far enough, but I, like I said, this is super boring. It takes forever, so I'm gonna do a montage here, so here we go, montage.
All right, we are all done polishing this pen. As you can see, it is more than slightly more polished than what we started with. And it was just using Brian Anderson's guide and some Micromesh, which is available from Anderson Pens. There's one more professional pen restoration trick that I want to show you, but I'm going to zoom out and I'll give you a... Uh, Another little trick here. No pen with imprints is complete without a fill in there and I'm using a professional grade pen restoration tool here. You can buy this at any children's toy store and or say Meyer or Target or Walmart depending on where you live is a Crayola crayon. I'm going to use gold in this case as the trim on this pen is gold and the nib is gold which isn't in there yet but we're going to try gold here and we're just going to rub it into this all different directions we're just trying to get it in there as best we can sometimes this works good sometimes it doesn't I think in this particular case it's going to work pretty good. I'm just trying to get in all the the writing here. We'll give this a shot too. Backwards, forwards, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So I'll just give that a whirl and then I'm going to take my microfiber cloth here. Just give it a wipe down. And there we go. There we have it. This now has a nice fill in there. Let's see if we can zoom in on here and adjust the light. This has a nice gold fill on there now. And it's been professionally restored and it looks amazing. Altogether, I spent about four hours polishing both the body and then later I went back and polished the cap. Altogether about four hours and as you can see with a little bit of micro mesh and a whole lot of effort, four hours worth, you can take a crusty old fountain pen and polish it into a beautiful new fountain pen. 
I'll do a writing sample of this Maybe Todd Swan in another video in one of the uh, Here's a Pen videos. Here's a pen. So we'll do that in a different video. But uh, I hope this has been helpful and uh, hope you can polish up your old pens into new pens. Thanks.